So hey everybody, it's Holly from Visit Brainerd and today, if you haven't already guessed, we're going to be working with bees today. <laughs> I'm with my friend Paula Schwartz, who happens to be uh, a master gardener along with myself. Um, and a hobby beekeeper. Yeah, and we, we are excited to show this uh, process to you. FYI, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> this is her first time, so she's learning too. So the first thing that happened when I arrived out here, we're, I should kind of disclose, we're out on a property that has lots of gardens. And are, do you have your bees here? Your I bees? have one hive at my home on Lake Edward, and then we have two hives here at this, at this property. Okay, um, Paula's just gonna kind of show us the basics of what needs to happen to collect honey. That's the ultimate goal. That's today, what we're right? doing today. But first, when, when I arrived, the first thing I did, I had to suit up. So we're gonna get into where the hives are and that sort of thing. But man, just tell us what is going okay. on. So the first thing obviously is, is bees do sting. Honeybees are typically more friendly um, than a lot of bees. And they are only aggressive when you are bothering them or taking their honey. So because we're taking honey Great. today, they, they are a little more aggressive, so it's important that we are protected. There are some beekeepers that will go into the hives without be, a bee suit. Not this time of year, probably not. Yeah, you had mentioned that this time of year, um, they start to get a little more aggressive, a little more sassy. See, she's busy. Busy as a bee, this one, so she's got her phone on. Go figure. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so uh, tell us about, like, when does the season start? Okay. So in Minnesota, which is different than in right. Florida or anywhere else, our season is, is actually quite short, of course. Um, some beekeepers in Minnesota will winter their bees, but for example, I do not. So depending on where I get my bees, I will get my bees sometime in April to very beginning of May. And then, then we put them into the hive. Do you want me to keep going and explain yep. this process? I mean, <clears throat> briefly. Briefly because we could stand here all day probably. Anyway, so we, we have to, to feed them sugar water really until June, just because there's no natural pollen and nectar. Totally makes sense. But, they're in, but during that time, they're in the process of increasing their population, the queen's laying eggs. And um, so a hive that starts out at about 4,000 bees currently is about 20,000 bees. And that's from one one queen. Or one queen that's been working all is yes she is queen. a and her girl. and her court all the ladies all the bees in this hive other than the drones are ladies the drones Female. are the boys and their purpose strictly is to mate with uh, unfertile queens so they don't stay in the hive uh, you had mentioned to me a while ago Paula did a presentation to the master gardeners like last week and I learned a ton but I have so many more questions you had mentioned that there are like every bee has a job mm -hmm. and there are how many different kinds of jobs I don't know well just some question. of the some of the jobs you have your queen attendant bees they just their job is just to take care of the queen you have the nurse bees their job is to take care of the, the, new, the new baby bees you have undertaker bees those are the bees that, that swoop out the dead bees out of the hive you have home. field bees of course which are the bees that are go, coming and going from the from the hive to bring back pollen and nectar uh, you have um, guard bees, the bees that will guard the hive when people like us start to, or if a bear comes by or whatever, so, or other or other bees. Do they give up warnings to the other bees? Like, yep, hey, there's something yep, going on? Absolutely. This is crazy. I had no idea that there was something. Does every single bee have a job? Mm -hmm. They have a tail. Yes. And how they're given those jobs? You don't know. I have no idea. That's one of the <laughs> mysteries. That's one of the mysteries. Okay. So speaking of guard bees, let's talk a little bit about what we're, well, let's go, let's step back and talk about our, our clothing first of all. Yeah. So the bees are less bothered by white or by light colors. So which is why you see bee suits being white. We are wearing white socks. Be probably better if I had on white shoes. I don't, I, but these I did are, as wet as yep, I could. So as light as you can. A little fun fact. So she, Paula had told me about, you know, the whole white thing. And I knew I was going to be wearing bee suit, but I also wanted to wear a white underneath because I don't know what I'm doing. And I just didn't really know what to expect. I got into panic mode this morning. I really don't have much for white. I got white jeans on. I pulled those out of the closet. Like I just light. Yeah. Yeah. I, did, I didn't know. I was, no, I was all nervous. Right. <laughs> well, we've had, we had an episode where one of our other beekeepers <laughs> showed up in a bright orange shirt and black pants or black leggings so guess what that looks like to a bee bear looks like a bear so you know that she, lesson learned she ended up 
getting stung a couple times. So yeah. that, that was a lesson learned. So we, we do wear light colors. It's just less agitating for the bees. And, you know, if, if you've seen the movie uh, with Queen, Queen Latifah, what's the movie? Uh, no idea. About bees. No idea. Secret Life of Bees. Okay. It's a beautiful movie and it gives you sort of the the emotional um, feel of what it is to be a beekeeper but if you move slowly and you use smoke and you're wearing white it is just good. less agitating absolutely for the okay, bees. Okay so you got to walk into this a little just chilled okay. out. Okay yes. Right? Yes. Okay, and they sense helpful. that. They will sense that. So when we think we're going to get stung and we run and we are all fearful they they absolutely will sense that okay good to know mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about you you were making smoke you were getting the smoker ready we've got one uh, so ready off to the side so here. when the bees are threatened when the bees are threatened they emit a, a pheromone that is an alerting or a, a, a guard you know alerting the other bees that there's a threat and one of the things that smoke does is it neutralizes, for lack of a better word, that alerting response. So when you do go into hives, particularly when we're trying to steal their honey, which they don't want us to do, right. smoke is particularly important. It would probably be easier in the spring when they're not so so aggressive to get into the hive without all your bee suit and you know. But using good smoke is is it's really not important. It's like there's time incense or anything in here. It's no, just no smoke. No, no. So we're, we just are using, we started with some straw and then there's just some, um, it's like almost cotton. like a cotton with some wood chips in it and you get it started and then it, which we'll show you how this works later, but this is what we will do as much of the hive as we can and it keeps the bees. Jennifer's done a great job of getting us smoke right now. Sometimes we don't have as great smoke. <laughs> so this is called a smoker. Okay, cool. Okay. So it's an a, a integral part of going into a beehive safely. Well, we are a fan of that. <laughs> good, 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 good. All right. Um, I have a question about startup. If somebody is interested in starting up, what do you call it, beeing? Beekeeping. <laughs> Beekeeping. Beekeeping. I mean, there's a cost. What do you need? Can you start with the basics? Yeah, and it's, it's very interesting. I just, I received a flyer, fleet flying. Fleet Farm is even selling bees now, so you know, oh, really? uh, you know, there are a lot of bee, bee places where you can get your your equipment, including Amazon. But you have to start out obviously with. We'll talk a little bit when we get closer when yep. we get to the beehive. But you need your basic brood nest for the bees to be. They and have to be laid. Like and the box. It's, they call that a deep. And it's a box. This is this is not a deep, but it's it's deeper than this. The deep is deeper than this. Okay, but it's a box, obviously. And okay. then the different frames hang on here. Okay. Yep. Like that. This particular <laughs> one is smaller, not as deep, because this is just for honey. And the biggest reason that we have smaller ones for honey is it's so heavy. If you yeah. used a deep and they were filling that with honey, you you wouldn't be able to lift it be so heavy to lift it off. So Paula the, during that presentation that I referred to, she brought one of these what like the you, tray That thing. was the that was a frame from the brood nest, the deep. And she passed it around and it there was some honey. It wasn't totally full, but it was amazingly and, heavy. And then multiply that by ten. Yeah. It was yeah. It was kind of crazy. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't really know, but I don't know. It was super cool. Right. So, and so when we get into this, you'll get to see how much weight yeah. is in those, but that's one of the reasons that the supers, a super is the part of the, the, the nest where the bees are making only honey, no brood. Okay. And how we, yeah, we can talk about later how we, how does the queen not go up into the honey supers and lay eggs? Yeah. How do you think? I don't know. I have no idea. There's a screen called a queen excluder. So if you have the brood nest and the second brood nest, and then you have all of these honey supers and the, you know, that gets taller and taller, there's a screen that you put on between the brood nest and the honey super that all the lady bees can go through, but the queen is too big. Got it. So it keeps her from going up into the honey super. Brilliant. And um, that way we can take the honey with not having brood right. or baby bees in there. It is a process. How long have you been doing this? I think this is my seventh year. Do you and there have been good years and bad years. Last year, for example, was a terrible year. We had swarming, which we'll talk 
that's a whole nother topic. Um, because of the drought last year, I just think things weren't growing. The bees didn't have as much natural food, nectar pollen. So um, they weren't producing it was, as much. It was an awful year, absolutely. And this year in comparison. It's just, it's a bunch, it's gangbusters. Boom, gangbusters, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, it's been really a lot of fun. Do you feel like you have learned so much in the past seven years and that you still have so much more to learn? Oh, I'm always learning. Yeah. We're always learning. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. I and love there's no one way. I mean, you can talk to two different beekeepers and they're going to probably do things differently. So you're learning from each other. Yeah. you got to do what works for you. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Uh, are we off to the hive? Yes, we're off okay. to the hive. Well, we'll see you guys there. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the beehive itself Ooh. before we open it up because right now the bees are gentle. I, I, I don't have my veil on. I don't have my gloves on. We haven't done anything to... She's calm. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> haven't done anything to <laughs> agitate them. Uh, right now they're just coming and going. Doing they're, they're, doing. they're doing the thing. I'm not standing in front of the entrance. That would be a, a little alarming to them. But right now we are doing absolutely nothing to alarm them. So earlier I talked about the components to the beehive. You see this box and this box are deeper sure. than these. So those are the supers. These are, no, these are your supers. Oh, these are what are called the deeps. So these are the, brood, okay. these are the brood nests. So this is where the queen is laying the eggs and all the bees are being born. Um, the queen, there's a queen excluder, which is a metal mesh right is here. Is that the screen you were talking uh -huh. about? Uh-huh. Okay. And so, the queen is too big to go through that, so she cannot get up into these boxes to lay eggs. So all that's being done up here is honey's being made and stored. You know, so they're they're planning for the winter. You know, so they're they're going to try to fill so everything they can. Like I've seen these, you know, out in the middle uh -huh. of yards or yep. whatever, and I you just never know. Right. I never the general population doesn't know. does not know what this all means. Right. This is fascinating. You know, and some beekeepers don't take their honey till the end of the season, so they just keep adding supers. So you can see them super high, no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> but the problem is, is these supers, when they're filled with honey, are extremely heavy. Right. So you get one up here, you need a ladder to take it out, which is why it is August 1st today. We're going to take some honey and spin it, and then I will bring back the frames, put them back in for them to refill, basically. Just What's because ready? I don't want this hive to get any any higher. And this process can go on until? until... Well, in Minnesota, again, right. typically the end of August, if you're trying to um, winter your bees, you need to treat them for mites and you need to leave enough uh, honey for the winter. Plus you power feed them so they make more sugar water kind of honey for the winter. Um, those of us that don't winter, we will probably do a, a final spin the end of September. End of September, maybe okay. even October, and the the honey and, and at that time of the season is interesting. It looks like molasses. So it's real dark, it's it gets real dark and real thick. Darker yeah. as the season Golden goes on. Goldenrod, all that, all that kind of stuff that they bring in. So, Crazy. You know, okay, cool. So that's sort of the the basics of the equipment. And so when people you asked about starting a hive, a, be, a beginner or a beginning hive set is going to be what they call the bottom board, one deep and the cover that's and it. that's all you need to start because you get your package of bees you put it in there and it, it takes a while for them to fill that up and then you need to have the second deep and then the super and generally when you buy bees you it's, when you buy bees you're buying like four thousand is that normal that's typical yeah that's about typical which sounds like a lot of bees and plus they're just making more bees yep it's, yep yep i don't know how many fit in one of these well, again, they say that we get up to 20,000 plus bees. Um, I don't, obviously can't count. Man, that is just mind blowing but, though. Yeah, you'll see how, how full it is once we, okay. we get in. And in another discussion, we will, today we're talking about the honey only, and then another time we can talk, look into the brood nest and show you what's going on in there. Okay. And do you, you would probably recommend, um, if somebody did want to start out doing this, like uh, if I wanted to do this, I would have you as my buddy. You could do that. Um, I also recommend anyone that's serious is the U of M B Lab does a one day, I think it's one day, it's either one or two day, and now it's online course, beginning beekeeping. So you can learn more and that And then way. they have an advanced course for beekeeping in northern climates, which would include things like overwintering and whatever. So if anyone were serious yeah. in investing in this, because this is not an inexpensive hobby, um, I think you know to learn 
profet formally would yeah. be great. And then yes, it's wonderful. I had a mentor help me when I first started, and I also took the course. I was going to say, I think I would totally do both. Yeah. Um, right. Why not be more educated? Right. And then right. you're just around where I could ask all sorts of Absolutely. questions. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And it's fun. But those of us that do bees love this, and yeah. it's really fun to to show it to other people and to get other people involved. It's, and it's good for our environment. Yeah, they they are so important. Absolutely. Um, some fun facts that I learned, like an ear of corn. You guys all know the hair that's on an ear of corn. Every one of those, is it called a hair? Yeah, I think so. Um, has been pollinated. Yep. Correct. Yep. By bee. And not necessarily honeybee. Honey, you know, in Minnesota, the honeybees are only one of 400 pollinators that we have. Now, not all 400 are bees, but right. obviously they're just one of many, many, many. It's such a small. Bees. Now, but here's a really fire. interesting fact, and you may not know this. One field bee in its lifetime, which is, I think, a couple months, will make one quarter teaspoon of honey. Wow. And touch two million flowers. That's a lot of work. <laughs> so when you look at a, a jar of true, yeah, good honey, and you look at the price tag, understand. you need to also understand what has, what yeah. has gone on for that jar of honey. So, Thank you for touching on that. I feel like that is such an important piece of information that many just don't understand. So if you guys are out and about at a farmer's market, which we have plenty of around this area, just know how much goes into this, um, how much goes into a little bit of honey. And you know, don't gripe about the price because uh, yeah. it's yeah. worth it. Yes, a yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Okay, well, what are we doing next? We are going to get into the supers and steal some of their honey. We're going to suit up entirely. We will suit up. Okay, yeah, oh so yes. next time you see us, you guys, we're going to be wearing what they call a veil. A veil and gloves headpiece. and gloves. So we're totally covered. So stay yes. tuned. What I'm going to do first of all is take off the top cover. This is called this is called an inside cover. We're missing our hive tool today, so people are going to say, "Why are you using a screwdriver?" Because we're missing our hive tool, but it will work. So I can already hear that the bees are more agitated. So Jennifer can come up here now and, and add some smoke into this honey super. It's not even, the smoke's not even like going in there. She, we're going to switch sides <laughs> based on the wind. There we go. Now, one of the things that she can do is I'll lift this up over on your side, stick the smoke in. See? Yeah, just put put the smoker in there, and we'll close it, and it just calms them all down a little bit. Now, Holly, you can lift this one, and this is about half full. Oh my God, this is heavy. Okay. So <laughs> we're gonna go all the way to the bottom one, and then we'll, as we're taking honey today, we're obviously not gonna take it all, all the frames. Smoke is great. It's about the same weight on this one. So there's probably what, 20 pounds in each of those? Perfect. I gotta say, there's something about being able to stand here when you're suited up and not have to worry about it, but it's still a little creepy. <laughs> and you're behind. Now, now this one's filled this one. Lighter. So there's not as much yep. honey in this one. Now this one should have the most, but we'll see, because it's the closest to the brood nest. But a lot of times the bees will fill, and then we move with the honey to the top, oops, because they feel safer, because having the honey far away from the entrance. Uh, this is really light, so I'm probably not gonna even take a look at this right. one. So we're just gonna leave this one here. There's the queen excluder that we talked about. Look at in there, see how busy it is? Right. They are moving around for sure. So when you're doing this, do you typically have a partner in crime with you to yeah, help? Yeah, it, it, you always for need taking honey. Yeah. Yes, because you've got to have the smoker going. Um, so now what Straight I'm going to do? Yes. See which ones in here we want to take the spin today. And we'll be looking at this other hive too, and there may be, may be more in there. So I'm not gonna, I could just tell by lifting it up that it's not really heavy. Even though you see all the honey in there? Yeah. 
It's not capped yet. They're still working on making it. I probably am not going to take this one today. Equipment's falling apart. So it's just a, like a trial and error. You're checking and rechecking. Well, and just, just no. We spun two weeks ago. We took honey two weeks ago. So this is all, all brand new, honey. brand new since then. So I'm really just sort of cherry picking right now. Um, also for the experience for you to see what we do when we. Um, okay, I'm not gonna wait. Oh, I thought I saw. There's a, there's a. Yeah. All right, we're not gonna do that. So they're like the they're making. See, this is flat. There's nowhere to put honey. They've got to make the comb before they can, and that's what they're doing here. They're so they've got a lot of work to do. Oh, on this one. Yeah. On this particular one, yes. Now let's, now let's get into where we're going to take some of this. The other eye is going to have a bunch too. The beekeepers that are watching me are going, she's using a screwdriver. <laughs> There's a regular tool that you usually use to, um, Lots of honey, but it's not capped. Yeah. So, so when she's there's when, ca some cap. When Paul is talking about it being capped, it's like the honeycomb has been sealed up by the bees. That's when you know that it's full. And it's the right moisture content. Okay. The bees will fan the honey to, and um, to get it to the right, what would it be, viscosity? I don't know what the fancy ooh, word. Ooh, nice one on this side. Not we're gonna nice. take this one. See, there's the cap. There's the capped honey. So yeah. we can be pretty. They're still uncapped on this side, but we will take this one. Can I have the brush, please. The brush behind is... you. And you know what your job's going to be? What? I'm gonna sweep the bees off, and you're gonna take it over to the bucket and get it in the bucket as quickly as you can without any bees getting in there too. So, <laughs> that little lady's got her head in there. Busy. And yeah, just get it in there if you can without any bees and put the cover right back on. And here's another one when we come back. You can take two actually. So it's nice soft and heavy. Yep. Okay, those two can go in. And if, if one bee gets in there, I'll be checking them um, before we spin before we them. Yeah, exactly. Look at that. Beautiful. So you brush the bees, you're not hurting the bees, you're just getting them off of the frame. They're not full, but they're capped, which is just really great. Quick! And that is, well, I'm going to let this... Take ones out just like so it. I have more room to. When the doctor says you smoke? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah! How would they get out of there? Sensing that. Look at this one. So it's not capped, but there's a lot of honey there. I think we're going to take it. Brush, please. Jennifer? It's, it's like soft. Yeah. Good job, please. Brush, please. Smoke, please. honey comes out of when we think, oh, we have four frames and you get eight quarts. Yeah, yeah. right? This side is, yeah, we're going to take that. There's nothing on this side, but we might as well. Yeah. 
show how knowledgeable I have. You are. This is all the creativity. And the last two, and Jennifer actually just had a great idea. We're going to combine. And you never combine this hive and this hive, right? No, Paula? no, because they know they'll kill the they'll kill the queen, and they know which one which hive is there. Correct. Perfect. Four of them. But then again, we're going to want to put those back in here because they already have. But you're going to have a free standing one, right? Wouldn't you just put them all out from the top of them? Or no? I'll put these. But see, these are all empty with no comb. Okay, gotcha. So these I are the realize. ones I don't want to put back on. But um, I just, I when just... I bring those back, when we spin them, we want to bring those frames back because they already have comb in them. Oh, so it's sure. quicker for them to um, make more honey. Make more honey. They don't have to make the comb first. Hold on. Let's not waste time on those. Okay. We can do that. Now, what's interesting about this hive is this hive did swarm earlier in the season. So, we were a little creative. There's only one brood nest, the queen excluder and all supers. Because it swarms, I go, I just want as much honey as we can get out of this because when, when a hive swarms, the queen takes about half of the bees and leaves. So, so yes, your population here. decreases, and in Minnesota's short yes, in Minnesota <laughs> Minnesota's short season, it's hard for that population to come up again quick enough. So typically, so if you if your if your hive swarms, you're kind of missing out. You 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 are missing out. So what we did is just did whatever we could to maximize honey sure. production on this. Let's see if we can take that. All of these frames that we're looking at have honey in them. I'm just being selective what we're taking today. We'll take this one. It might, it's runnier. But the fact that they've capped a lot them, of it. And you're mixing them. Yeah. <laughs> these guys are angry. Yeah, they're getting. Well, remind Dan to bring his tool. Which tool? Oh, the viscosity! Yeah. Although, now this side is kind of funny. Uh -oh. So that's, that's, um, that's funny. It is going to fall. Jennifer, what about the front? Look at how they're all really swarming there. They're okay. In yeah, the front, they're just, maybe. Yeah, they're, they're agitated. They're not necessarily mean. Yeah. They're, I mean, something's going on in their hive. Now, Paula, um, I think that's been on this frame for this. Super. Do they get more agitated throughout the year? Well, again, through the getting close to fall and winter, they're, they're the most aggressive and agitated. I, I'm using that word the same. Oh, do I have to keep the frames separate? Here's another one that's really heavy. I just lifted this and it was heavy, so this back one is full. Paula. Well, I'm sorry. Do I have to put the frames separate from the different hives? No. Okay. Because they're they're done. Ooh, they're all a nice one. This is a lot. Look at that. Yeah. It's a nice one. Can I stack the frames? You can do whatever. Yeah, they'll drip into that clip. bucket, okay. and and then if you run out in there, use the blue one. That's it. Oh, no. Shan, do you have the viscosimeter with you? I gotta stop by home and pick it up. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good. notes on everything. I am taking notes how much 
honey uh, we're getting honey. and where it's coming from. Yes. Yes, but but it's a attention to detail. <laughs> That's not my my forte. If Thomas were here, he would be he would be documenting. You know, as we mentioned, he's like Dan. Every beekeeper has their own process. And Paula own, is Paula owning is, hers. Their own <laughs> strengths and weaknesses. <laughs> Paula is the doer. This is Paula Church. Yes. Okay, that's all on this deep or super cable deck. We've got two more to look at. And the smoker is doing awesome. Yeah, it's gonna make a big difference. You gotta figure it out. And it's time. Part of it's time. Hard to have it here. So what we're going to be doing now is, is spinning some of the honey off of the, the super honey frames. And so the, the equipment that we need is we happen to have an electric three frame spinner. There are some hand crank ones, which we started with years ago. And then there are the bigger industrial ones that can probably do I don't know, 10 plus frames at a time. So from there, we need a knife. Can you show the, the knife? which he's going to use at some point. That is a knife, Thomas. At some point to, <laughs> to, because all of this honey on this frame, this white stuff is, is like capped wax. So all of the honey underneath here is capped with this cover. So we've got to take that off before we put it in the spinner because the spinner through centrifugal force is going to get the honey out of the comb. So Thomas is going to take that off. Can you do it? You can't do it all the way to see it. So for her to see it on the camera. There we go. How sticky do you guys get when you're doing this? Depends on who you are. <laughs> <laughs> when 
not gonna lie. <laughs> it's a fair one of us gets really sticky, the other not so much. <laughs> I'll let you figure out which one's what. Okay. Did you guys always do this process in this way or have you morphed it into this from your seven years of experience? We have morphed it into doing it inside. We used to do it in the garage, but the bees, when you're taking honey, the bees find you. And so we would often have bees coming into every crap where we do it outside where you think, oh, it's better than making the mess inside. Um, but the bees would always find us. And so we have found that by doing it in here, you know, we can also control. It's, it still gets sticky. Um, but so do you, do you do one tray at a time? We're going to put three frames in there. We'll spin it, then flip it to the other side, spin it. So basically, oh, okay. let me show her. Yeah, do the next one. Sure. And do that. Sure. Okay. So this frame only has capped right here. So that's the only part that he needs to rough up, basically. So he's just taking that. So you're removing the cap, basically. He's removing so the wax cap. So mm -hmm. then the honey will fly but again, out the there. We like to see the wax cap because, again, that tells us that the bees have determined that it's the right moisture content. And what do they say? That honey will stay indefinitely, thousands and thousands of years. So once it's capped. You mean like you, it can stay in your cupboard? It can stay in nature. They say that, that honey is the only food that will never spoil. That's Ever. crazy. Ever. Ever. Been for thousands of years as you have three in there already? Yeah. All right, I'm going to move out of your way here. Infection. Meditation. How long does it spin? Roughly? A couple minutes per side, maybe. Yeah, typically we'll go anywhere from five to ten minutes. It depends on viscosity. For, not per side, though, do you? Yes. Do you, you do that long? Yeah, again, depends on the yeah, viscosity. Yeah. Later on the, in the summer and the fall, it tends to be a thicker, heavier viscosity, in which case then you need to take longer to spin. What do you Just mean by viscosity? Thickness. Moisture content. Got it. And we have a tool here today that Dan's going to show us because the, the honey is des desirable to be under 18% moisture content. Oh, so you can measure it. He, Dan has a tool. We've never used the tool. Um, and hey, so when people are sh uh, like at the at the at the state fair when they're doing honey competition, the viscosity is a big part of that, not just flavor and taste. It's it part of the part it. of the judging. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. As we personally have not gotten it, uh, into them. If you would like, there's a clearer side of this thing that you could aim your GoPro down in through and you could see the honey spinning out of one of the frames. Oh, okay. And, and once you're... So what we're looking for, if you can see this, is that this side of this frame now has pretty much zero honey on it. Okay. So it's all spun out, where this side still has. So we're this side then is obviously going on the outside. And again, we'll just do this on all of them. It seems fairly simple. It yeah. is. It's just, now it's just. Hey, this is complicated. Rocket <laughs> surgery type stuff. Come on. So if you were to see it from here, you can see the honey hitting the outside of the barrel. And from there, then down. it drains down. Okay. We'll probably do three more frames, and then what happens is we have to drain it because at the bottom we get that much honey, and it won't spin anymore mm -hmm. because it's Too, the honey's in the way. Sure, so we have got to it. it so, uh, is there any way to do this without a spinner? I mean, you, mm -hmm. you need a spinner. No, you, you can do it without a spinner. Just pull the cone on and leave it like flat. Let it hang. Yeah. And it yeah. Run out. And, and you, you've seen people that sell honey with the comb yeah. and it just drips out, but you're eating it that way yeah. or sucking on it or whatever. I had a friend ask me, how does a bee make the honey? She, she had asked me, is it bee spit? Basically. <laughs> bee vomit. Yeah. It's bee vomit. <laughs> that was a fun I know, I'd like to try and clean it up for you, but it, it really truly is. 
it, it they but ingest saliva, I like saliva. all of you know their uh, nutri all the what they go and forage for nectar all the nectar what they'll call you can speak to it the nectar flow yeah yeah and then simply when they come back to the comb what they're doing is then they regurgitate it and put it in the comb. You have got to be kidding me. With the intention me. of then coming back and eating it later that is on during the winter. Correct. Yes, which is why they cap it. They're not doing this for us, they're doing it for themselves. Right. That right. is so interesting. I did not know that. Okay, so now we're draining. So what's going on here is we need to drain some of this out because the, the spinner is getting caught in all of this honey. That's so it's bad. draining into like a cheesecloth bag. Because there are bee parts in here and debris and wings and whatever. So we need to, <laughs> to, we need to strain out all of that. And once it goes through that bag, you'll, you'll see it momentarily that it will put it right into jars. And that's it. It's liquid gold. So, mm -hmm. we're going to get a lot of honey today. And this was just like a small batch. So what you have in here is the honey that we spun, but as you can see, it's not clear. We've got wax in there. There may be bees, you know, in there, whatever. But, um, so that's why we use the, the, the bag. And then what we'll do is we're going to just lift this up. And this is draining now into the bucket. And it'll... And whatever is in the bucket is the honey. Yep, the, and then we can put that into jars. Yep. How long does it take to strain? Um, the majority of it will strain in five, ten minutes. But then we'll, we'll hold it and um, we'll, I've been known to, we, overnight, to answer your question, <laughs> to get everything out. But what Jennifer's doing will have it, help it get out quicker. Oh, you're kind of just squeezing it through? Uh-huh. Massaging it. There you go. And because and obviously, and because it's more, um, this, the viscosity is high, um, it'll go through quicker. If it were really thick, it would take longer to. Interesting. All right, so if you want to put it up here while you're doing that, I can fill a couple jars. Can you do it from down here? Yeah, I can do it down, as long as she can bring the GoPro yep. here. So here we go. Liquid gold right there. Liquid gold for sure. So we were chatting a little bit earlier. I was commenting about how I feel like I could never go through this much honey in my, my lifetime. Uh, how do you use this much honey? <laughs> well, every, I'll speak to my favorites and then Jennifer can speak to her favorites, but just simply on toast, on plain yogurt, um, one of my favorite appetizers is goat cheese and you dribble fresh honey all over the top and fresh rosemary and put it on crackers. You uh, better call me when you have that. Uh, going on. It's the, but bottom line is it's recommended that you don't heat honey. And it's not that it's going to change its flavor, but it, it loses its beneficial properties. So if someone wants to cook, use a recipe that cooks the honey, I recommend you go to the store and buy some less expensive clover honey, you know, or something in a store, not not this kind of honey. So we typically don't put it in our tea, you know, because that heats it. You could, but you certainly can, but we don't. Um, and so, how much honey do we go through? Well, a lot, <laughs> a lot. We also give. It's fun to family and friends. Family and friends. Are um, we? Are you guys pouring Christmas gifts right now? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think the term you were looking for was artisanal honey. Art is that artisanal, artisanal. honey? So th is this is artisanal honey? No. Yeah. Not oh. Costco honey. Right. Got it. And people, and when you we're we're going to do a taste test shortly of of two to three to three honey spins, all from the same hives and. The, the flavor will be completely different because of that that time of year what the bees are bringing in to make the honey 
And from one day to the next, it may taste different. Yeah, so look at the difference. This is two weeks ago. Hey. Can you see it? Yeah. Two weeks ago to today. So today is, looks a little more cloudy. Well, that's the air in there right oh, yeah. now. The so air from the spinner, settle. it's got to settle down a little bit. But I, I don't see the difference there. But we'll taste the difference. Okay. Hey, Dan, what are you doing? Uh, this is a, a refractor, and it uses light to go through the honey that's between two thin plates. And looking in the scope, through it at a light source, I can determine the amount of sugar, the amount of uh, uh, water content inside the honey. Why do we want to know that information? Because you want the honey to be of a certain viscosity or a certain thickness, um, preferably below 20% because it will last long that way. If okay. it's got too much water in it, first of all, it's not as, as sweet because it's so thin, but second of all, it, it won't last like honey should. So I've put a little bit of honey between the two plates. Now I'm going to find a bright light source and look through here. Oh, it's like a little magnifying glass kind of thing. It is. And you're at 18, now you're at 19%. So just a little high. Yeah. And that's what this looks like. Right. And this is from and early on, right? Down to what? We got ours down to 18. Okay. Yeah. So this, this, this we, is from an early batch? This is the last spin that we did, oh. but we knew it was running when we did it. Um, and again, as I'm continually learning about this, we knew that we could probably put it into a small room with a dehumidifier and drop down the moisture content a little bit, but we had already put it into the jars. So we still did it. But it would have been more effective if we had left it in the uncap the frame or uncap the, the cells of honey and put them into the room. So then there would be more surface area and then it would have worked better. That was not done in this, and that's why it's interesting for us to know what the moisture content is. It'll be fun now. So this was spun two weeks ago, and we'll look at what we spun, what we spin today and look at the Color viscosity, different. and we'll have you guys taste it. The difference okay. in two weeks. Okay, you guys, so this is a part of the crew that was a part of the process today. Um, it took, well, there's actually six of us here today, but two are off screen right now because they're camera shy, and that's okay. Um, so what we are doing today is uh, taste testing. You guys did three, we have three different, tell me what's going on. Uh, we have, we have, <laughs> we're taste testing three honeys. <clears throat> the far honey to where I'm pointing this is, one? was spun in end of June. Okay. Or middle of June. The middle one was uh, middle of July. July 22nd. And this one is the one we spun today, today August 1st. So really just a couple weeks between each spin. There's not a huge difference in color. There often is. Um, a lot of times the early spring honey is a lot lighter than this, but I think that the three of you are going to certainly notice a difference in taste, but it'll be interesting to see how you describe it because you, you will sense it, uh, you will taste a difference, but to describe it is a whole nother story. Just a quick note about the whole taste thing. You had mentioned something, I don't know if we were on camera or not, but like every honey, location or every hive location can make the honey taste differently Correct. depending on its surroundings. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so we don't, we don't know what this is going to taste like, but it, it right. depends on like, uh, give me an example. Like, well, I have hives in two locations this year. So we have a hive here at my home and then I have hives at this other garden that's probably five miles away, five, 10 miles away. And we spun two days apart. The, the honey from the hive here and the, hi, the honey from the hives over there, and they tasted very different. That's crazy. And so it just has to do with the the, the difference in what's what trees, you know, are there linden trees around here? Uh, there, are, I know that there are apple trees over at the other location, which we don't have here. Who knows what the bees are bringing back, but it, what the bees bring back is dictate, dictates the flavor of the honey. Could you plant a garden to... Sure make your honey taste a certain way? Sure, and when people say they have clover honey, these are people that probably have hives in, in the middle of a huge clover field, because bees will go two to three miles. Yeah. So you can't, I don't know how someone can say it's a specific flavored honey, because you can't control where the bees are going. Right. But, um, so. Okay, you guys wanna dig in? 
All right, so let's, let's do it. Let's okay. taste the, the spring one first. So we're just dipping a spoon in. Just, and... just the tip of it. Yeah. Yep. Not the whole spoon. <laughs> Enough that you can get a flavor, a taste. It's smooth. It's sweet. It's delicious. And you may want to go back to it, just throw the spoons up, so that you be using new spoons when you no go back to it. No double dipping. <laughs> okay. So now, oh, right. go to the next one. You can, later you can go back to the first one if you want. I feel like I didn't take enough last the first time because it was so good. <laughs> so I feel like the second one is stronger. Okay, stronger. I don't know how to how else to explain that. Do you think? What do you think? First of all, it's different, correct? Yeah, yeah. it's totally different. You have a thought? Went down the wrong way. <laughs> yes, this feels lighter, mm -hmm. but this feels more like. It's the first one is sweeter to me. It's lighter, it's fresher. Yeah. This feels more like it was done like from vegetables than, than a fruit. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just think it's different. I, I don't know. I'm not that specific about it, but they're both good. Okay, this is from today. Yeah. This is the hard work today, Polly. Take pride. Wear your crown, Polly. Different? It is Actually, different. you know what? This one's going almost fresh again. I, that's what I think too. It is almost fresher than that. Maybe it was uh, the viscosity. No, I, that's, that's, that's right. I feel like the Try first and the third are Try those two. similar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it really is. That one is yeah. a little heavier. And then this one you go back again. You're not going to know what the spoon's like. It's, yeah, it's, it's lighter. It's fresher, sweeter. It's, yeah. All right. So and these are all from the same hive. Now, location. It, two weeks apart, a couple weeks apart. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> what is this? Honey. We only. Huh? <laughs> this is <laughs> October honey. October. October. You're kidding me. 2018. 2018. We keep it only for taste testing. <laughs> Looks like molasses. It you tell me what it tastes like. Now, the mint first. one is in Florida. <laughs> hmm. But that's 2018, so it's but th that doesn't matter. It. I'll wait. <laughs> I have a word that comes to mind. Totally. What's your word? No, what's your word? Um, <laughs> molassesy, and I don't. <laughs> is, that was word. right on. Well, mol the molasses. molasses. I didn't add the Y, but it does and, taste and molasses. sour. And that's honey. And it, is it just from sitting or because it was done in October? What they brought back, probably. That Rag is crazy weed. how you know, much darker that uh, is. It's still mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's just different. With the sugar is down. Now, normally, there. we wouldn't be spinning that. Most honey beekeepers don't spin that. They leave it for their bees and, you know, but... Why? I mean, well, why not? Their, that's their winter prep food, you know, when it's whatever. Okay. And it's not as appetizing. It is, yeah, because exactly. It's, exactly. Because it's so dark. Yeah, it's not something you're going to probably throw. You're not going to take a bottle of molasses and throw it on your yogurt. It's too strong. It's, it's too strong. strong. Yeah, strong is a good word to describe it. I still like it, though. Did you come up with the mm -hmm. word? Are you no, I said it looked like molasses one? before we tasted mm -hmm. it, and it does taste like molasses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I just wanted to show you the difference. Well, and then when we yes. get to next month, it'll start to be a little dark. It won't go this dark, but it'll, if you go to, again, I always re reference the, at the state fair, the bee building or whatever, they have literally a rainbow of honey. I mean, it starts out in light yellow, it's good. The it goes all the way yeah. up through this, and, you can see, and that's what it is. Okay, you guys, this was a heck of a day. Um, thank you so much for your time You're and your information that you shared with us today, all okay. of you. Um, I think everybody here except for me has had some sort of beekeeping experience, so I was a total rookie today. It was great. Um, and I'm probably going to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine. Well, we still
still have some more to teach you about the, the brood nest itself. So yeah, we, we there's, there's lots of information out there. Um, again, as I talked about earlier, if you guys are out at a farmer's market um, and you see a container of honey and you're questioning the price, please know that there is an awful lot of work that goes into this. The bees do that all the time. Yeah, most of it is done by the bees, um, but there's certainly there's some time and effort that, that gets put into this, and um, it is certainly appreciated by everybody with a sweet tooth. So Good. Uh, that's definitely one more way of how you guys can love Brainerd. Make sure you stop at those farmer's markets and wherever else you see some homemade honey, and uh, enjoy.